In a previous video, we introduced this idea that periodic preventative maintenance is essential for the long-term reliable use of your car and probably also a chiller, um, a pump, a fan, mechanical things that have big moving parts and bearings and gears and oil and refrigerant and stuff, those sort of things, we need to do pre periodic preventative maintenance so that those engines and machines and stuff last for longer. And that we introduced this idea that that possibly does not apply to building management systems, where the instrumentation, if we check it every year through preventative maintenance, doesn't mean it lasts longer. I think the example we used was um, you got a valve actuator and every year you drive it up and down and you check that it works up and down, up and down every year, one, two, three, you know, all these years. And we discussed how in the 16th year that actuator would fail anyway. Even though you stroked it open and closed 15 times before that, it doesn't make it last any longer. And if you think about these adverts that you watch on TV where they're selling beds and they've got this arm thing, this piston, that presses down on the springs and they do this and they say, look, you know, these beds have been tested in our factories. This bed is going to last you for 10 years or, or 20 years. There's, there's a 10 year guarantee. I would assume that BMS companies or manufacturers of equipment do the same thing. They have a valve actuator and they drive it up and down for a very long time. And then they determine that on average of all the test actuators, they determine that these actuators can go up and down on average, you know, 10,000 times. So the mean time between failure is 10,000 cycles. That's how long this thing lasts for. So the idea here is if we can halve the amount of time that the actuator goes up and down, we can halve the amount of time every day that that happens, we could probably, it would probably result in that actuator lasting for double the amount of time. So rather than it failing at, you know, you know, 10 years, it'll fail at 20 years. That's, that's the idea. So some of you might be sort of getting an idea of where I'm going with this. This is PID loop tuning. If you think about that actuator for a chorter valve or whatever it is, or anything actually that moves, if it goes up, 50% to 60, 50, 60, 50, 60. Although it's not going up and down, the motor is still energizing and driving down for five seconds. Driving up for five seconds. Driving down for five seconds. Driving up for five seconds. That's still wear and tear on the motor, the motor windings and the gears in there. So if we properly tune our PID loops, I feel that we could reduce that time. Now, first thing to realize here, if you're a service technician, is that the commissioning technicians in construction land, they do not have enough time to go to the toilet. So they don't do PID loop tuning, I don't think, in construction land. You know, at best, they prove that that analog output is wired to that actuator, we've not got the cables crossed over, it goes up and down, so we've got voltage and, and our control signal, and it drives the right way. If it goes the wrong way, they flick the reverse acting switch on the actuator and it reverses the action and it goes the right way. That is what they probably do. There isn't time to do anything else. If they're walking through a plant room and they hear all the VSDs going like it's, it's very noticeable, they will go and tune the PR loops on the static pressure control but they are not studying um, the trends. If you have a trend that's set up for um, 15 minutes or 10 minutes, you're not gonna see that. So to do this, you've got to, some BMS systems can run a live trend, they click this button, a live trend comes up and it tracks the live, like you know, every two or three seconds, it, you know, it updates the samples. They look at the live trend. So if you're a server technician, you've got to look at the live trend and stare at it for 20 minutes and see, oh, actually, hold on. The 15 minute trend shows it nice and steady, but when I look at the live view, where it's updating every one second, maybe, um, it is actually going up five or 10% for 
five or ten percent that's unnecessary wear on the motor it's going to fail sooner than it really needs to the other part of it is um integral action is the killer of outputs in my opinion and we need to i don't know you need to check your pid block if it has a function built into it that shuts down the integral when you're within a certain distance from the process variable so ideally what you want to happen is if you're controlling your air handling unit static pressure with the vsd you want integral to be shut down and disabled if the static pressure is within say 10 pascals of the set point or if it's a chill water system and you've got chill water system pressure and you have your pumps the pr loop to the vsds you want to shut down integral action if the the system pressure is you know within 10 kpa of set point because integral will keep pushing it open a bit more open a bit more open a bit more oh you went too far come back a bit more come back a bit more come back a bit more oh you went too far come back but open 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 close so integral is one of those things that could just keep you know pushing it too far you want you want proportional to do the heavy lifting to get the valve open 50 percent then integral closes that last gap the last bit of error but you don't want integral in my opinion to be active all the time so look in your pr loop is there a function that you can look in there to disable it? maybe you got to do something else i don't know so for service technicians go and have a look at that if you can just halve the amount of times that the actuator motor opens closes you don't have to drive the whole way down just 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent if you can halve that amount you are maybe going to double the life of the actuator you will have to you can then spend less time doing preventative maintenance because things are going to fail as much now another thing that i've seen is the bms controller on the analog input there should be a filter in there so sometimes the um the process variable temperature humidity pressure co2 co whatever it is the process variable it's sort of fluctuating a little bit and the pr loop sees that little fluctuation and it moves the output 51 50 51 52 51 50 49 tiny little bit you wouldn't even notice it so i've seen this loads of times i'll say to the bms guy hey look you need to put a filter on the analog input let's have a look at it he's, he's like what's a filter i don't know what you're talking about no one told me that um and i don't think all bms companies maybe they don't have a filter it's a time-based filter what it does is it looks at the process variable and then over like one minute or however you adjust it it filters it so that it's more stable it sort of you know you don't get the, the peaks and the, and the troughs of the signal so if you don't have a filter built into your analog input for the, the the device that you use your controller you might need to build something behind it in the software but again a little bit of thinking there and a little bit of studying the system you might be able to change something that causes the actuator motor to engage half the amount of time during the day and the actuator lasts for longer now we'll wrap this up soon i've got to go somewhere in an hour so i'm just going to cheat and look at my notes here because i've got to get this finished very quickly so here's my notes so i'm not going to go into detail on this last bit but here's the point if you have a good quality sensor actually if you just have a, a half decent sensor because i did a construction job witnessing the last year and the the bms company the brand of co2 sensor they were buying one in ten was faulty out of the box it was very bad and, and during witnessing i found at least one faulty sensor on every single floor while i did that so if you had a decent sensor it's installed in a good location because often sensors are not installed in the right location and that causes problems but i'm not going to go into that you have a good quality cable so your cable that you're wiring is a 0.5 to 0.75 millimeter cross-sectional area little copper cable a good quality cable that helps a lot two years ago i did some witnessing i was on the floor with vavs i pulled the sensor off the wall and all of the sensors were running cat5 cable and i've seen that quite a few times that instrumentation is running cat5 cables like why are we doing that does someone know the answer i don't know if it's very cheap 
If you know why people are buying Cat5 cable and not using proper screened instrumentation cabling, please comment down. I'd love to know why. Um, and the cable is properly screened. So good quality cable, properly screened is important. The analog input filter, we already touched on that already. Good PR loop tuning, we touched on that already. Actuator properly installed, or the sensor properly installed. Who installs BMS equipment? Not everyone knows that BMS engineers are not the people that install BMS equipment. BMS equipment is usually installed by an electrical subcontractor. And usually the person who's running cables and doing fit off of the cables and putting the actuator on the valve or the, or the, the damper actuator on the damper, that's often an, an, an apprentice electrician who probably did not read and study the installation instructions. It's just like their foreman said, look, when you do this, you take the actuator, you put it over the, the shaft of the damper, you put this bracket on, bzz, screwed in, the U-bolt, you screw those two bolts in. Man, there's a lot of actuators fail because they're not properly installed. So if you're a service technician, it would be good just to go through on your very first year of service as you come out of the defects liability period, just to go to every single valve actuator, every damper actuator, you read the instructions first, because you probably also haven't read the instructions, and make sure it's properly fitted on the way that it's designed to be fitted on. Um, the right size Newton meter actuator. So on a brand new job, the outside air damper, it moves nice and freely. So we put a 10 Newton meter damper actuator on there, and it works. It drives open, it drives closed, the commissioning technician signs it off, his commissioning sheet's done, puts the date there, his initial, yeah. And it works, but five years later, or 10 years later, that damper, it's not moving as freely as it used to. It's a little bit rusty, a little bit corroded maybe, it's got dust there in the, in the linkages, and now it's really struggling to open and close. And that actuator now is running every day using maximum power to drive the damper open and closed. If we had a properly sized damper actuator, maybe it would have been a 15 Newton meter actuator and not a 10 Newton meter actuator, and it wouldn't be driving full current to drive the thing open and closed. Maybe it would last an extra five years. It would fail at 15 years, not fail at 10 years. The correct IP protection, ingress protection. We did a video before on, I think it was called like RP65 is not weatherproof or something like that. Go watch that video. Every single job in the whole world, sort of exaggerating and guessing, um, or at least when I do witnessing here in Australia and I walk on the roof where we have the cooling towers with you know um, isolation valves and actuators and we have the flow return temperature sensors and then we might have some chillers outside or um, and there's stuff there I will always always be able to find at least one two or three or four different types of BMS instrumentation installed outside that's IP54 rating it should be rp65 rating i would say that generally and i stand to be corrected that you do not get ip65 damper actuators you don't get rp65 i did some research about 10 years ago i couldn't find one you've got to put a box over it or a bag over it but you can't buy an ip65 damper actuator so if you have air handling units installed outside with outside dampers return dampers and spill dampers it's highly likely those actuators are not weatherproof they're not going to last very long you will change those things three times in the life that one of them should have done should have lasted for so how do you fix that you can't buy an rp65 i don't think you've got to get a bag some countries when i was in the uk you could buy a purpose-built bag that fits it over things. So you've got a valve actuator, there's the valve, linear actuator, there's a bag that went over it, you tied the bottom of it. Or mechanical has to put a little hat over the actuators. You've got a damper actuator, there it is. They've got to put a little, a little hat, a bit of cut up a bit of ductwork, a little hat over this is weatherproofed. So eye pre-protection, that's what it is. So if you do all these things, and I'm rushing here because I've got to go, we're not there's more probably. Why is the equipment going to fail? 
it's not going to fail. It fails for lots of those reasons there. You probably find that every single, there'd be a lot of equipment in your building if you studied it, that there'd be two or three things on that list that could be contributing to the thing prematurely failing. So the goal here is that we resolve these things. You're a service technician, fix these things in the first two or three years of maintenance, whatever it is, or try and improve on our commissioning processes, although those guys don't have time. The idea here is not to reduce preventative maintenance and therefore reduce our BMS annual maintenance contract value from 100,000 Australian dollars a year down to 50,000. This is not what this video is about. This is about reducing the amount of preventative maintenance we do reducing the amount of time that we waste walking around looking for broken things that provides zero value to anybody and we use those man hours that we are freeing up for high value tasks which revolve around improving the building's energy efficiency rating enhancements to graphics alarms trends energy efficiency control strategy optimization mini projects for the purpose of improving the return on investment for the owner. So when the owner invests $100,000 a year of their money into this building management system, it results in value to them. That can be measured either through an improved building's energy efficiency rating, reduced electricity bills, or at least the BMS becomes more reliable, more usable. So, is that it? All right, my call to action, which my business coach says I need to start doing these videos. Um, I think I said this last week, we've got this advanced 10 week maintenance course. If you live in Australia or New Zealand, or you're in our time zone, please reach out to me and go on the waiting list. That course currently runs once a year. I'm busy doing it right now. That's why I'm talking about this. It's fresh in my mind. I spoke about this two weeks ago in the course. Um, if we get enough people on the waiting list, we'll run another session. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.